again here at Buffalo Trace Distillery for another episode of Whiskey Wednesday. We're with Bo Beckman, the director of Single Barrel Select Program. Bo, how you doing? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. Thank you for asking. Yeah. How's Tim today? Hey, doing good. Awesome. Yeah, well, thank you guys for uh, following me around for a little bit today. We've got some fun stuff to show you. So we are actually standing outside of Warehouse H. So Warehouse H is a uh, warehouse very near and dear to my heart. It's basically the home place of our single barrel select program. So we've done, we do all of our barrel picks in here. And so we can jump in and learn a little bit about the warehouse. Um, but before we do so, how the warehouse got here. Mm -hmm. So Albert Blanton started working here early 1900s. And by 1934, he had enough clout at this place to build a big house at the top of the hill for him and his wife. And also by 1934, he got to build his very own warehouse. So Warehouse H is different from every other warehouse. So right here you have Warehouse C, which is another near and dear to my heart. And that warehouse was 1881. And you'll notice you have limestone base and a brick structure. Mm -hmm. Now, brick won't get as hot and cold as fast as metal. So if you come back to Warehouse H, you have a metal warehouse. So this warehouse will age differently than every other warehouse we have. It's actually the most unique of all the warehouses we have. And where this uh, warehouse really got its story was a guy by the name of Elmer T. Lee. So actually Albert Blanton begrudgingly hired Elmer T. Lee and Elmer T. Lee, and I say begrudgingly because Elmer T. Lee came in one day and applied for a job and got turned away. And then the guy that basically got Elmer in here said, don't worry about it, come back on Monday. So Elmer walks back in on Monday and Albert Blanton says, I told you, we don't need any hands here, buddy. Like, get on out of here. But the guy said, come on, keep coming back. So we're glad Elmer persisted and continued to keep coming back. Well, Elmer was on the warehouse crew and Albert Blanton would throw parties up at his house, which you can't see from here, but just a, you know, about a couple hundred yards away from me. And he would actually throw big parties up there and he would invite guests to come up and enjoy some of our very special whiskey that's made here. Well, if you had a house on a distillery and you built your own warehouse, you would probably be biased and like the whiskey that comes out of that warehouse. So Elmer T. Lee and the rest of the warehouse crew were tasked often to come and grab a barrel out of Albert Blanton's warehouse, Warehouse H, and roll it up the hill so they could serve it to guests at the parties. So that was 1934. And Elmer was actually with us for 71 years after that. Well, throughout that time, a lot happened with bourbon. You know, basically, it, there was a rise and fall of bourbon. And by the early 1980s, bourbon was kind of in the gutter and uh, wasn't getting a lot of attention. So Elmer T. Lee, who'd probably been here 40, 50 years by that point, you know, my math might be bad, but whatever, he actually had the idea of coming back into this warehouse, the original uh, Albert Blanton warehouse, and handpicking one barrel and then bottling it as a single barrel and calling it Blanton's. So that was the first time ever that bourbon was commercially sold by the barrel. Um, oddly enough, the founder of this distillery, E.H. Taylor, who built Warehouse C, in his time, he was selling bourbon by the barrel. So he would take his barrels, polish them up, make them look really nice, and then they would go and sit at a bar on the back bar and you'd bring your growler to fill it. So originally, all bourbon was pretty much single barrel, but as it progressed, you'd see batches and kind of make it uh, more consistent flavoring. So um, once Elmer started picking barrels out of here and we developed this barrel program around Blanton's where you're going against the grain of normal processes of a distillery and instead of dumping a lot of barrels together, you're bottling one at a time. So we started really learning a lot about the single barrel program. Mm -hmm. now, here comes our warehouse crew. We'll get out of their way so Tim doesn't get run over. <laughs> All right, so we have been doing barrel picks in here since, since as long as we've been doing them. So as far as I can see from our fun old records, the, our barrel program goes back to at least 2002. And I know that there was even some folks in here in the 90s picking barrels of Blanton's with Elmer. 
So come on in. That must have been an experience. Yes, I, you know, I'll hear from customers that will talk about it and say, yeah, I actually was there in the 90s picking barrels with Elmer. I say, are you sure? And then they'd show me a bottle from way back when. It was just fun to think about. Mm -hmm. Sadly, smell doesn't travel through camera, but it smells delicious in here. Yeah, what are we smelling? I mean, yeah. it's a it's a big smell. I wish I wish they could smell it. Yeah, you are smelling. I would basically the angel share. Mm -hmm. So to my left are about twenty thousand barrels aging. The mm -hmm. vast majority are barrels of Blantons. Um, we've got some of our barrel program barrels also sitting here waiting for bottling. Uh, we can kind of come back here yeah. and take a look at this warehouse. Now, first thing you'll notice. And E.H. Taylor actually put in steam heating when he built our original warehouses. So these steam heating pipes actually predated this warehouse, so we was already up and running so we could put it in. But this will keep the warehouse at a temperature where we're aging year-round. So now as we look down here, we've got mm -hmm. barrels aging. You can see something like this, an empty rick shows barrels that were just bottled. And mm. now we're waiting for new barrels to come in and start their life cycle of aging. So, you know, uh, of all the barrels in here, the biggest difference between each of them is the barrel itself. So if you start dissecting a barrel and you wanna look at, you know, all the different com flavor components and where they came from, we know the vast majority of the flavor is going to come from the barrel. So historically, the normal way you produce bourbon is you're going to batch barrels together, and that's how you keep a consistent flavor profile. It kind of negates the individual influences. Now, what Blanton's really did was is it said, hey, we're going to bottle these as single barrels, and what that means is each of these might be a little bit different. So if you think of a parent that had four kids, they went to the same schools, had the same teachers, but they're still a little bit different. Barrels are very similar. They uh, mature at different speeds um, and they really just kind of have their own, um, you know, unique flavor to each of them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to somehow graph a flavor profile, there would be a cluster of Blantons. So there'd be a lot of different barrels that fit in this Blantons cluster. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is if you were to drink a bottle of Blantons today and then you open your next bottle, they might taste a little bit different. You know, most people aren't able to have two open bottles of Blanton's that they can side by side. So um, there is a little bit of unique nature to the single barrel program, and that's a lot of the fun of it. Um, but if you think about a barrel, so a barrel is made up of 28 to 32 staves, and the staves could be from different trees, different cuts of trees. And if you start thinking about how old that tree was and how fast that tree grew, all of that has an impact. So why does it matter how fast the tree grew? Because that dictates how, much, how many growth rings per square inch are in your stave. And essentially what that dictates is how much interaction your liquid is gonna get with the barrel. So when we fill a barrel, we're gonna put 53 gallons of, you know, for Buffalo Trace, 53 gallons of 125 proof whiskey into this barrel. That first year, we're gonna lose about 10% of that volume. And actually most of that is alcohol going and getting stuck into the barrel. Throughout the rest of the lifespan, as the barrel's aging, it's basically breathing, and the water molecules are smaller than the alcohol molecules, and so the water can actually find its way in and out of the barrel over the course of its life. So at the end of it, what's happening is you start losing water, so your volume is going down in the barrel while the alcohol concentration is going up. Now, the whole time that's happening, the liquid inside the barrel is interacting with that individual barrel, and that's where you're gonna get very unique taste. So, amongst all the different um, components of bourbon, if you wanted to figure out where all the different flavors come from, you can think about your, uh, the ingredients you use, your corn, your rye. And if you think about grapes, we say that this year's vintage grapes is different than next year's. That's no different than bourbon. The corn we use this year might be a little bit different than next year the weighted percentage of our recipes. So the vast majority of bourbon we make uh, is gonna be corn, rye, malted barley. We have a, another mash, mash two, which actually has corn, rye, malted barley, but a little bit more rye. And then another popular mash we have is our weeded mash, and that's where the Weller and the Van Winkle comes from. Mm. Are all three of these different recipes 
part of the single barrel select program? Yes, all okay. three of the different recipes are part of the single barrel select program. Some of the recipes have multiple showings in the barrel program. What I mean by that is Buffalo Trace, E.H. Taylor, Eagle Rare all come from MASH 1. So think of MASH 1 as the base of the tree and then different branches coming off of it. So different branches can be, you know, how you bottle it, what proof you put it at, where it aged, how long it aged, um, how you filter it. So all of these things can make a difference and that's how you can really start veering uh, to different taste profiles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these barrels here will get put into the warehouse and age up until the standard uh, age for that brand. So if these were Buffalo Trace barrels and we put them in the warehouse today, 2020, in 2028, our team would come and we actually have you know warehouse crew, you know, Big Matt Simpson is who I was always picturing, mm -hmm. coming in, puts his headlight headlamp on, has a drill and a sample bottle, and I don't know if you can get it, but he'll actually go down and drill a barrel and fill that sample right from the barrel, and then he'll plug the barrel with a little cedar peg, and then he'll take that sample to our lab, where our tasting panel is. Mm -hmm. And our lab is going to taste through it and basically decide if it meets the standards of that brand. So for the barrel program, essentially our lab is kind of cherry picking barrels to bring in here for customers to taste. taste excuse me. So that will take us to the next spot. Yeah, and I think that actually, it probably answers Ronald on Facebook's uh, question. He says, does Bo do it all by himself or is uh, the barrel selection done by a committee of five in the reconciliation room. And it sounds like he's watched a, a past episode talking about the reconciliation yeah. room. So, I, Bo, I, is it just you or it sounds like it's more A than lot you? more people than me. Um, yeah. So, really, as far as who dictates what brands get into the program, what barrels, we lean heavily on the tasting panel. So, Buffalo Trace Distillery has a tasting team that has to meet all sorts of qualifications to be on the tasting panel. And to get on the tasting panel, mm -hmm. you'll meet with Drew Maysville, who's our master blender. Right. And he's going to run on a few episodes as well. Yep. And, you know, he's going to run you through the gamut and make sure you know what you're doing. Yeah. So actually on my team, Susanna Hubler, who um, runs the barrel program here at Buffalo Trace, we actually plucked her from the lab. She was on the tasting panel, has a chemistry background. Um, so that was a big reason why we want her on our yeah. single barrel select team. I've seen her. I've seen her quite a bit doing uh, barrel picks around here. Mm -hmm. And one thing I noticed we were walking by is this uh, this plum yeah, bob plum in here. Bob. And so I know that's it's it's of interest to folks. We've had people question ask questions about that before. Could you go ahead and clear that up? What that's for? Yeah. So this is kind of interesting to think about. If you want to come back yep. here, it looks like we're hung up a little bit here. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. so the way you produce bourbon is this rick will get filled with barrels all at one time. So today's production, we might bring in 30 barrels and put them in this rick. Well, my mental math is not very good, but 30 times 53, mm -hmm. so 30 barrels times 53 gallons, it's a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And so when you extrapolate and think, okay, if we're gonna put 500 new barrels into a warehouse, mm -hmm. you're gonna displace a lot of weight. And these ricks here are purposely built separate than the structure because what can happen is when you fill this rick with a lot of barrels it's going to shift so we have very sophisticated technology in this plum bob here so you got a, a wire hanging from the roof all the way down pointing to due center and this will tell us if the warehouse is leaning one way or the other that's you know, pretty wild honor tradition embrace change is the motto here so there's a lot of tradition to speak of that's right you know. Now, if you want to come through this way, we actually have a barrel selection set up. And maybe just walk us through the whole process. If sure. somebody was interested in uh, getting involved in selecting a barrel, where, where do they start? Yeah, so the best thing to do right now is go to singlebarrelselect.com and you would be able to join and sign up for a profile. Sadly, with bourbon, the uh, demand has outstripped supply by a good margin. So unfortunately, we don't have barrels readily available to buy at any given moment. However, we do restock every year and we give all of our customers an opportunity to pick from our restock once a year. So sometime in this December, members of Single Barrel Select will have an opportunity to go in and order barrels of Buffalo Trace, Weller, Blanton's, maybe an E.H. Taylor, 
Um, maybe some other fun things that we sneak in there. Um, it's not a guarantee that you're going to get one. In fact, it's pretty likely you won't. It's tough, um, but that's just the nature of it. We just don't have enough. Um, mm -hmm. We're making more every year. Mm -hmm. But that would be the best place to go is to singlebarrelselect.com um, because when we do have enough, members of Single Barrel Select will know first. Um, okay. That's where uh, availability is communicated. Got it. And got it. And so Don E on YouTube actually asks, uh, I think this is a pretty good question at this time, is it true that in order to be part of the Single Barrel Select program, you have to have a liquor license or is that only specific to your state? So it's actually only specific to the United States. So if any consumer, regular Joe consumer, yes, you can absolutely buy barrels. However, you just need a retailer to facilitate the transaction. So, you know, you're gonna buy Jordans from Foot Locker. You're gonna buy alcohol from a liquor store. Mm -hmm. So yep. we'll, we'll ship them to the liquor store and then you can go in there and purchase it. Okay, makes yeah. sense. So We may have had, I'm gonna back up. We may have had just one little technical interruption there, which is, seems like it's always unpredictable here in these rick houses so it may have stalled us out if it did this is the second video so we're going to probably have two live videos so if you watch the first one start on this one if you're just starting on this one make sure you go and watch the beginning of this uh, uh live video with Bo. this is the second video so just wanted to clear that up in case we did lose connection and had to jump to a second video okay all right so what we got here Bo? Yeah, so what we have here is a barrel selection setup. So you've got four different barrel samples, and our customers are going to be able to come in, and you can see there's several different tasting stations, mm -hmm. and they're going to taste through these four different samples and pick the barrel they like the best. Now, we've got some you know, helpful guides all around here to kind of help them figure out what it is they like about the individual barrels and kind of pinpoint some of the different characteristics. But really what I always recommend to folks is when you're tasting bourbon, if you've already decided you liked it, which if you're in here picking a barrel, I would hope you've decided you liked it by that point, then really you're tasting just fine. Um, there's not a perfect way to taste. You know, I've met a lot of different experts over the years and they all have very different opinions on how you taste. Ultimately what I say is if there's four pancakes in front of you here and I said, which pancake do you like the best? You could probably figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's no different with bourbon. Um, there are objective taste profiles with each of these, but it is subjective how you articulate it and what you appreciate and you know, how that comes out into tasting notes. Sure. So myself, I'm more of a, I like this one, I don't like this one. You know, some people can get really into the tasting notes and romance it. Mm -hmm. um, yep, cool. The four barrels we've got rolled out here. So these are four different barrels of Buffalo Trace. And what's pretty interesting about this barrel program, it's one of my favorite things, um, is we can pull barrels from the same recipe. So barrels that were filled on the same day, barrels that were filled with the exact same recipe, and barrels that aged in the warehouse right next to each other. And we can get very different opinions on those barrels. Mm. You know, I had it yesterday where the barrels that we had rolled out, there were four of them here. And the first three had actually all aged right next to each other. And so we labeled the barrels A, B, C, and barrel A got a bunch of votes and barrel C didn't get any. And same recipe, same warehouse, same age, everything's identical except the barrel itself. And that's just how important the individual barrel is to the barrel program. Yeah, and I can see that's, that's the big attraction to selecting your own barrel, you know, is if they're, if, it's, if they're so different to be able to come in and find something to your taste Yes. That's like the ultimate pick, you know, yes. the ultimate purchase. And, you know, what's, it's kind of a double-edged sword with the barrel program, if you will. If we all came in today and decided, you know, this was the best barrel of bourbon we've ever produced. If everybody tasted it, it said 100 out of 100, and then you told us to do it again, we can't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have 30,000 plus barrels aging of experiments in order to try to figure out how to replicate the best barrel of bourbon ever. So we're trying to make the best barrel of bourbon, and then if we do make it, we wanna know how to make it again. Um, and so that's kind of what the fun is with the barrel program is, you have these groups that will come in and they'll pick a barrel, and you know, it's a unicorn in their eyes. It's an absolute treasure. But the sad part is, is once you run out of the bottles from that barrel, it's gone forever. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of the, you know, it's a fun part of the barrel program, but a sad part at the same time. Um, the, interesting part about that is with bourbon you can only use a barrel once right 
a lot of other barrel aged spirits, you can reuse barrels. So our barrel program actually extends beyond Buffalo Trace Distillery. Uh, we have a barrel program in Barton 1792. We have a barrel program in Fredericksburg, Virginia at A. Smith Bowman. Uh, we, have, uh, we sell Caribou Crossing Barrels, Canadian whiskey out of Montreal. And then also one of my favorite brands in our program is Corazon Tequila. And what actually we can do is now that customers will come in here, if they all say, all right, Barrel D is the best, we love it so much, and we've established that the biggest difference between barrel D from the others is the barrel itself. The thought process is it's a shame to put that barrel into retirement. Mm. We know that barrel you know, impacts the spirits nicely. So what we can do now is give the customer the opportunity to use the barrel again. So we call it the barrel boomerang. So essentially you pick your barrel of bourbon and instead of us shipping the empty barrel with the bottles that come to you, we can ship your empty barrel to Mexico fill it with tequila, and then we can tra take a trip to Guadalajara in a year or two and taste your barrel of tequila. And if you yeah, want no, it, it's yours. And if not, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's like uh, you, you found the great barrel. You found the barrel you love. Why, why waste it? Why not yeah. send it on and, and age another spirit in it? Yeah, they, the barrels really do have more to give after that first use. Um, more so, you know, when you think about the age too, you know, the younger the barrel you dump out, the more it has to give the next go around. Sure. You know, so it's a lot kind of, of flavor left in there. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting to watch, you know, a Buffalo Trace barrel get used again for tequila versus a Blanton's barrel get used again for tequila. Yeah. And it, it can extend beyond tequila as well. Uh, you could do it with rum, brandy, um, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. One thing I'm, I'm starting to pick up on, too, is when, when we're talking about the single barrel program and, and you dove into a little bit of the history with Blanton's and, and Elmer. I mean, it, those guys seem like the total inspiration for this program. I mean, you were talking about Blanton's, but in, even beyond, wouldn't you say that's, is that where it started? Yes. What I talk about often with this distillery is we have had an amazing run of forward thinking leaders at this place. Mm. So you can start all the way back with E.H. Taylor and him building the foundation that we're on today. And then you can go to Albert Blanton. And if you think about his leadership through Prohibition, Great Depression and World War II, you know, it's amazing that we came out of that, you know, you know, okay. You know. Um, but then beyond that, you have folks like Elmer, who's thinking about the barrel program in 1984 of handpicking single barrels. And then even to Mark Brown, Harlan Wheatley, Chris Comstock saw, you know, the, you know, I guess saw what was really cool about the barrel program. And then regardless of how much work goes into, uh, executing a barrel program thought that we really need to highlight this at the distillery yeah so you know well, it's given everybody a chance to to taste taste individual barrels even beyond the blanton's brand yeah and into into the weller brands and the and the eh taylor brands like you said it, it's amazing and for multiple reasons one you get to hand pick your own barrel and really find a spirit that's perfect for you mm -hmm. but you know in my opinion the best part of the visit happens out there when the you're touring the distillery and you know you get to meet the people that make it you get to learn about the category learn about the distillery um, and so really that whole experience you get to call on when you go home and you get your bottles you know 200 bottles from a barrel and all of your friends shared that experience picking the barrel it's something that you know will last forever or as long as you keep the bottles and don't give them all away and drink them all <laughs> too fast yeah but that is the nice thing. You, you walk away with an entire barrel of bourbon that you can share with your friends for a long time. Um, yeah, Bo, I mean, I think this is pretty amazing. And, and uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people are envious to be able to taste these barrels and, and, and pick barrels. So hopefully we'll have more, more to come in the yeah. future. I know there's a big expansion going on here at the distillery and there are more, more bourbon to come. Yeah, more barrels are getting into the barrel program every year and more brands every year. So, um, you know, we just won't sacrifice age or quality. Um, so, you know, we're, we're patient. That's you know, great. We have to be. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Choice. Well, um, we've, we've uh, you know, we've covered a lot. I know you're, you're really busy. You have an actual barrel pit coming in here in the yeah. next few minutes. So I know you got a job to do. Uh, any closing words or any, anything else you want to add to it? Um, well, I, w I think, you know, we covered a lot, but I would say the main thing is if you're really trying to figure out how to get a barrel, your best bet is going to be going to singlebarrelselect.com and signing up. Um, that is where we communicate availability. 
And uh, beyond that, I would say come visit Buffalo Trace Distillery. Check this place out for yourself. It's great virtually, but if you can get here, it's mm-hmm. add the smell to it. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, adding the smell to it. It's always a bonus. Well, thanks a lot, Bo. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for listening for a minute. (laughs) Yeah, no, thanks.